Hey, what's going on guys? John the Video Guy here. In today's video, I'm going to go over my first DSLR camera, which is right here, the Canon T5. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, why am I reviewing the Canon T5? But I think being the first DSLR camera, I learned a lot from, you know, the first major camera purchase of my career. You know, I was in high school when I purchased this camera and it was a big deal for me back then. So I kind of wanted to make this video to kind of go over my thought process and what I think what I was getting, as well as some of the things I learned through the purchasing process, my experience with this camera and my takeaways. So I hope this helps you even regardless if you're looking for a new camera and different specifications, you know, this video might be able to help you if you're a first time camera buyer. So feel free to keep uh, watching and like and subscribe to the channel if you like this video and let's begin. So I first bought this camera back in 2014. I was a junior in high school and I was involved in the media technology program there where we were first learning about DSLR cameras and just how cameras work. So in the class I learned from the Canon T3i's which were hot back then back in 2014, 2015 and whatnot. So I was thinking to myself, well, I could buy one of these. So I went on Amazon and I did some research and I found the T5, which was about a few hundred dollars cheaper at the time. And I was like, you know what? It's almost, it's very similar. Let me purchase this and see what happens. I remember, I think that was one of the first larger type of purchase items I did on Amazon back then. So, you know, being a junior in high school, this was a little, uh, you know, new experience for me and I was a little nervous when I placed the order hoping I'd get it and then I liked it. So once I got it, I couldn't complain. It was what I wanted. Um, I shot a lot of videos, movies, photography. I took this to the park several times, got some really nice wildlife photos, different landscapes and stuff. So it got used quite a bit in those few years I had it. All right, and I still have it, but I don't use it as much as I used to. So when I was purchasing the camera, the things I was looking for is a full high definition camera, where back then I still had my camcorder. And if we, you watched last week's video, you can see I unboxed my first ever camera. They only went at 720p. And this did full high definition, which was 1080p. So that was a key feature of this camera. The other thing I wanted to look into is getting a DSLR because of the lens selection which is pretty cool. You know, you can buy different lenses for the cameras, such as prime lenses and zoom lenses. You know, you can get the prime lenses such as the 24 or 50 millimeter, which I have here. I actually went cheap on the 50 millimeter. I got like the Yang Nuo brand, which is like the Canon one, but like 50% off. So instead of, I think $100 is like $50. And I got the 24 millimeter, which is nice and thin, very light. And this actually came with the camera. It actually came with the telephoto lens and then the kit lens. So I had a nice focal range to start off with, but that was one of the key features is I wanted to invest in a camera where I can start building up a lens collection. So DSLR was my best bet there. And at the time, I thought actually this was industry standard. You know, DSLRs were on the rage. You see a lot of wedding videographers use DSLR cameras as their videography cameras. So I wanted to get in on the action and purchase my first DSLR camera. I have to say it wasn't bad. So after using this for quite a while, I noticed a few drawbacks I should have paid attention to before I purchased this camera. And the biggest thing with this camera, especially as a videographer, is the viewfinder. As you can see on this camera, the thing I overlooked was there's no expandable viewfinder where you can actually see, you know, have it positioned and see where it's going wherever the camera is because you can, if it comes out like most cameras do, you can actually bend it and see what you're shooting. Now this isn't an issue if you have an external monitor, but at the time I didn't really have an external monitor for this camera. So that was a drawback. One of the other things I noticed is it doesn't have a mic port as well. So once I started doing more movies and video recordings such as interviews, I noticed I couldn't plug in a microphone to this camera. So that was another drawback where on the side ports there isn't a mic port for an audio in. So that's another drawback for this camera. And the thing I also noticed about this camera is the battery life. So, you know, these cameras, it depends on the type of battery you buy. If you buy the 
Canon branded batteries, they last a little longer. I bought a few off-brand batteries, they didn't really last as long. So, you know, in general, they kind of go through batteries pretty quickly. So I think cameras of today are a little bit better with batteries as the battery technology gets better, but that was a drawback, as well as monitoring the battery. Because when you turn it on, you can see the little icon in the top right corner where it says how much battery life you have left, but you don't really know the percentage. And then some of the other Canon models for this, you can actually go in and see battery life and you can be like, oh, okay, it's 54% left or it's 30% left. You have a better idea where this camera didn't really have that. You, there wasn't a menu option to actually see exactly how long and the actual battery life of the camera. And another uh, one <laughs> that's a drawback that a lot of people complain about with this camera is the bottom. Uh, this is where the SD card goes in. So you can kind of see if you're shooting on site somewhere, that could be very problematic because, you know, if you have to change cards, you have to take off the face plate of the tripod, get in the under the camera and replace it. Where most cameras nowadays would be on the side, sides of the camera, where it would be very easy to open it up, pull in and out a card and change as needed. So, and it just makes it very difficult since it's kind of, with where the battery is, it makes it difficult to kind of get around the battery and to eject it. So another drawback. And another thing with DSLR cameras, I, I think it's a DSLR thing just in general. I'm not sure if it's a Canon thing, but most DSLRs only run for about 30 minutes and they turn off. So I don't know why, but this is a thing that is common where they only run for 30 minutes and they turn off. So, you know, when I was doing videos or very long interview type of formats, I would have to break, uh, you know, 20, 28, 29 minutes in, hit stop, hit re-record and redo it. So, you know, that can be problematic, you know, compared to other cameras that can just go for hours and hours. This camera wasn't able to do that. So what's my takeaways of this? Well, it wasn't a bad camera. And you know, still to today, this is a decent photography camera, especially with the wide variety of lenses I have, I would still use this for photography. If I went to the park and was shooting some wildlife photos, or if I went to the zoo or the beach, you know, this can be still a decent photography camera. I don't know for video, really. I would recommend getting mirrorless or some type of other more advanced camera for video. I think video technology in general is adopting more quicker and developing new technology every single day where the technology that goes into photography doesn't really change that much. You know, it's a photo, RAW has been around for like almost forever. You know, you got your lenses, you got the camera. The only thing that really changes in photography is like the megapixels, which I think this is actually 18, which isn't, it's still not bad. So, you know, that would be the only thing would be the depth and the actual resolution of the photos. But I would say other than that, that would probably be the only thing that I would use this camera still today for. So there you have it. That was my first DSLR camera purchase. What I learned from it and, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took something away from this. You know, if you are in a purchasing decision for buying your own DSLR camera, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. And also guys, if you want to support the channel, I just put together a Redbubble website where you can check out my video editing swag from t-shirts, coffee mugs, and different things. If you want to help support the channel, donate, get something nice that you can use in your own video editing adventures, you know, get a nice shirt or whatnot that represents you. It would really help my channel out if you did that. You don't have to, but it's there if you want. Down in the video description is the link to go to that. So with that, thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you next time.